Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get started using MindStream, which is a macOS email client built specifically for Gmail users. I've been using MindStream for a couple of months, and I think I've finally found, for me, the best email client as someone who loves working on a Mac, but uses a Gmail email account. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get started with this app. I'll highlight some of the key features and settings that I think you should be aware of. And as usual, if you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. Now, before I get into the demo, let me give you a bit of background as to why I decided to switch to MimeStream and where MimeStream as an app actually came from. If you would like to skip ahead to the demo, feel free to use the chapter markers in this video. Now, if you've watched my YouTube videos before, you might already know that I'm a big Apple user and I've actually been using Apple Mail on the Mac for many years. Apple Mail works really well for my personal iCloud email and I've always been syncing my Gmail or Google account to Apple Mail and I manage my personal and work email all in one place. But when I discovered MimeStream, which was actually recommended to me by uh, my colleague, I learned that MimeStream is much better optimized for Gmail accounts while still giving you all the simplicity and minimal design of the Apple Mail experience. Now, MimeStream was actually developed by a software engineer, and I'm probably going to butcher his name, but it's Neil Haveri. And Neil was a software engineer at Apple who worked on Apple Mail and Apple Notes for seven and a half years. So that's really good to know because Neil has all this experience working in the Mac OS system, and he's built, as you can see, a really great Mac OS app but he's built an app that works really well for Gmail users, which Apple, as an organization, they're never really gonna do. They want you to stick in Apple Mail and use their software. So I think MimeStream really addresses a big gap in the market, which is they've developed this app, which is great for Mac OS users who work in Google email accounts. And as you'll see in this video, MimeStream gives you all the power and functionality of the Gmail experience natively on Mac OS. And so I decided to give MimeStream a go. I did the 14 day trial and pretty quickly I decided, yep, I'm gonna subscribe, I'm gonna pay for this app. And so now I'm still using Apple Mail for my personal email, my iCloud email, and I'm using MimeStream for my work, my Google email. And I actually quite like having that separation between work and personal. On the topic of pricing, it is worth pointing out this is a paid subscription. Now you can of course do a 14 day trial, no credit card re required, and you can check that this app works well for you, which is exactly what I did. When I decided to pay, I went on to the annual subscription, which is $49.99 a year, which I think for an app that I'm using every single day that really boosts my productivity, this is a very fair price in my opinion. You can of course pay monthly as well, $4.99 a month, which you'll pay a little bit more over the year. But even that I think is a bargain for what is basically you know, the cost of a couple of coffees for a brilliant app. And I also want to point out again about this team, um, they're a small bootstrap team of five people. They haven't raised any funds yet, which I quite like because when they raise funds and you have external shareholders to please, you know, prices can go up quite quickly. So I really like supporting a small team, especially when the product is this good. So I've put the link to the MimeStream website in the description of this video. When you're ready, come over here and click download, and this is gonna download the app to your computer. Now, I'm not gonna walk through how to install the app. I'm sure you can do that part yourself. So let me skip ahead and show you some of the settings and features within MimeStream once you've got it downloaded. So here I am with the MimeStream app downloaded and ready to go. And I believe you get walked through the steps to link your Google account when you open it for the first time. But if not, you can go to your settings and on the accounts tab here, this is where you can add your Google account. So you can see I've got my Paul at Minaco.com Google account already connected. If I want to connect multiple Google accounts, maybe I have a personal Gmail as well, I can click the plus button and I can sync multiple Gmail accounts. If I am syncing multiple Gmail accounts, it is worth probably assigning a color and a profile so you know is this personal work and you can easily differentiate messages and which account they've been linked to. I'm not actually really using this or not using the colors because I just have the one Gmail account connected. 
You can also see I've enabled the permissions so that Mimestream can access profile photos for the contacts that I'm emailing. I've also enabled the integration so that I can quickly respond to event invitations, and I can even access certain Gmail settings from Mimestream, which I'll be showing you as well. Now, I want to highlight some of the other important features or settings here that I think are really useful. If we go back to the general tab here, the first thing you can do is you can decide what type of email shortcuts do you want to use? Now, as I mentioned in the intro, being a long time Apple Mail user, I've got that muscle memory now for how to easily send emails and archive messages. And I remember those Apple Mail shortcuts. So I use the Apple Mail shortcuts. But if you work in Gmail most of the time, and maybe you've developed muscle memory for those Gmail shortcuts, you can use those shortcuts. So this is a really nice little touch because it means I can change the shortcuts based on my preference and what I already know. You can also customize what the delete key does. So if you are on a message and you click delete, you can choose, which I've done here, for that delete key to archive the message or to remove the current label. You can also have it just simply archive the message and remove from inbox. Or if you're not an archiving person, you can just move the message to the trash. So with that setting enabled, I can then click on a message like this one. And because this is just in my inbox, we don't have any labels applied. I can click the delete key and now I've just archived that message. Or if I go to one of my labels, so here's an email with a label on it, I can click the delete key and it removes the label from that deal. It's little things like this that convinced me to get Mindstream. I find that just being able to use those Apple Mail shortcuts and use the delete key to remove labels just saves me a little bit of time. I find using the mouse and having to click and remove labels to be just that much slower. So just having that delete key to quickly remove a label saves me so much time. And these little touches inside Mimestream are really nice. Some other settings and features that I want to highlight here are firstly, you can see I've chosen to make Mimestream my default app. So if you click an email address link, it's going to start composing the message in Mimestream. Going back to the accounts tab, you can see on the inbox categories tab, you can choose to enable inbox categories. If you like the social promotions updates categories that Google uses to sort your email, you can turn those on. I don't like these categories. I don't like them. I'm a, I'm a, a bigger fan of using labels. Um, so I've kept those turned off for now. You can also see on this vacation tab, I have the option to enable or disable and to customize my out of office or vacation response email. So this is because I've enabled that feature. Uh, here it was here, Gmail settings. It gives me the option to customize that autoresponder. So if I customize it in Gmail, it will update here. Or if I update it here in Mimestream, it updates in Gmail. So that's really nice because it means I don't have to go to the Gmail interface to turn this on. If I go to the sidebar and lists section, a couple of things that you'll want to make a decision on are the swipe options. So when you swipe an email with your magic mouse, you can choose. So I've got here the left swipe for me gives the unread and star options, but I could have that archive or trash or apply a label. And my right edge swipe gives me the archive option. So if I go to a message in my inbox, if I swipe left, I've got the markers unread and star options or swipe right and I get the archive option. While I'm here, let me show you one of my favorite parts of Mimestream. So if I archive a message or I'm just gonna remove it from my inbox here, listen to this you get a really satisfying inbox zero. And I just love, <laughs> I love getting to inbox zero throughout the day and getting that little celebration. It, uh, it always brings a smile to my face. I'll also just point out at this stage, you can see all of my Gmail labels on the left here. They've just synced across. When I connected my Google account, all my Gmail labels are ready to go. And if I want to, I can click the plus button here and I can create brand new labels. And this is again, what I think um, Neil and his team have done really well is giving me the option to customize my labels, my Google account settings directly from inside Mimestream. I don't have to go to the Gmail interface to set up a new label. I can just do it directly from here. Okay, let me show you some more settings. On the viewing tab, this one I really like because this addresses one of my big criticisms about Apple Mail. In Apple Mail, when you click a message, as soon as you click that message, it gets marked as read. And I'm not always going to read the message straight away. 
in MimeStream, I have this option where I can choose to mark the message as read immediately. So basically the same as Apple Mail after a delay, which is what I've chosen. And I can say, right, I've got a one second delay there, but I could make this longer. Maybe I want to give myself at least five seconds to just scan the message before I mark it as read or it gets automatically marked as read. Uh, I'm going to leave mine on one second there or close enough. Or I can just choose to have full manual control. So again, this is one of those just tiny little quality of life improvements. I haven't seen this or I don't have this option in Apple Mail, but I really like having that little customization available in MimeStream. On the composing tab, you can co customize basic fonts and the undo send delay time, which I've set to be 10 seconds. You can set up templates. I'm not using this yet. Uh, I have a lot of my email templates already built out in Text Expander, uh, so I'm not using this feature. On the signatures tab, my email signatures, which I set up in Gmail, have synced across as well. Uh, that's really nice. I don't have to recreate them here. If I change them in Gmail, they get updated here. And I can also change what signature gets used for when I compose a new message versus when I send a reply. So maybe I want to have a uh, kind of more simplified signature for sending a reply. I have that option here. Another really useful feature is I can customize all of my filters. So for years, I've been setting up filters to help me automatically manage my email. All of those filters have been created in Gmail and I have full access and control over them here. So I can easily edit a filter. I can change the actions that get applied and I can control all of that here. Again, MimeStream allows me to make these changes to my account settings without having to go to the Gmail interface. And finally, on the Labs tab, you can choose to enable uh, certain experimental features, um, which I currently have turned off. So that is a look at some of the settings in MimeStream. I would recommend, once you download the app, just reviewing the, those ones that I've highlighted there and customizing everything to your preferences. Once you've done that, you can just get going. This works very much like any other email client, or if, you've, if you're familiar with Apple Mail, you're going to find this very familiar. Now, a couple of features that I want to highlight again that I find really useful. Firstly is the search. Now, I'm just going to bring up Apple Mail here. If you use Apple Mail, you may have seen that when you search for an email, let me say warwick at poolminers.com, it defaults to show you messages from that person. And I almost always have to go in here and change this to just message. I just want to look for any message from that contact. And I have to do that every single time. It's quite annoying. Whereas if I search for a contact in here, so let's choose that contact, it defaults to show you messages, any, any message from that person, rather than defaulting to from. You can see I also have the option to look for emails that have been CC'd or BCC'd to that person. But I really like this little adjustment here where it just defaults to any message and then I can narrow down from there if I need to. Another little feature that I really like is that my drafts get shown in line in the current thread. In Apple Mail, if I start composing a draft, in order to go back and find that draft later, I have to actually go to the drafts folder. Whereas in MimeStream, you can see it clearly says here, you have an unsent draft. I can quickly click to open that draft. I can make my changes and then I can click send. I don't have to go to a separate folder to find the drafts because quite often I, I actually forget that I've even started a draft. So seeing it here in line, I really like. And then when I'm ready to send this email, I can click send and archive, which is nice. So if I'm replying to an email in my inbox, I can send my response and it will in one click archive the thread as well. And the final thing to just show you here, which again, this is something that's just lacking from Apple Mail, is this button here to quickly expand or collapse all messages in a thread. I can either click that button or I can use the shortcut sh um, Shift Command E and I can easily expand and collapse the thread, which is nice. At the top of my message, I can see my labels there. I can click the X to remove a label or I can click the button up here. 
and we've got full access to our labels here. Um, I actually have an assistant who processes my email first. She applies the appropriate label. So quite often what I'm doing is removing labels. And so I can click on a message and I can just remove it. Or again, using that shortcut that I mentioned earlier, I can just hit my delete key to remove the label once I've dealt with it and I need to remove it from that particular label folder. So there you go, that is an introduction to MimeStream. As you can see, I hope you agree that Neil and his team have really given a lot of um, attention to some of these little settings and features. They've really given thought to how do we create a better email experience. So quite a, lot, a few of those things that I showed you were just small little settings and features that you can customize so you can get this app working the way you want. And as I said, I've only had MimeStream for a couple of months, but I am paying for it now. And it's really improved the efficiency and the speed at which I handle my email. I also should have said at the start, I'm not being paid to make this video. I don't even have an affiliate link to share at this point, but I really like highlighting really good software that I use that I get a lot of value from. So I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.